I remember the first time that someone came to me and said, what do you do for a living? And well, at the time I was in college and YouTube was my only form of income. So the most accurate answer to that question was, well, I'm a YouTuber. And I remember the first time the business came to me and they said, hey, we'd love to partner with you as part of our influencer marketing, implying that I was an influencer. And it kind of boggled my mind. Right, like this is such a strange concept. And I think for good reason. I think many of us have this kind of instinctual knee jerk reaction to that idea of an influencer or a YouTuber, especially around the idea of religion. And that's what I want to talk about today. Well, hey guys, what is up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Austin. This is Gospel Simplicity, a place where we seek to bring simplicity out of theological and historical complexity. Today, we're shifting gears a little bit, and instead of doing an interview, you just have me today. So I hope you haven't clicked off already because of that. But I want to get back to doing some videos talking about the things that are most important to me, topics that I think really matter. And I think the topic we're going to be talking about today is something that all of us should be thinking through critically, because I think so many of us, we just kind of accept the status quo as is without reflecting theologically, without reflecting seriously about what this means and how we might interact with our age we live in. And specifically, I'm talking about this disproportionate influence that we can have in the modern world through things like YouTube. After all, you're watching this video on YouTube. And so before you think that I'm going to make a whole video about basically saying what I do is bad, rather than that, I'm inviting you to think with me critically about how should we make sense of these things. And so looking back over the past few years, I've been able to make tons and tons of videos, meet incredible people, have conversations I could have never imagined, and all the while get paid to do it and reach millions of people. All of that mainly from my dorm room in college. The fact that that's even possible is something that still is hard to wrap my head around. But for most of the time, I took that as kind of an unqualified good, right? I, I grew up in this evangelical context where the entire kind of MO is how can we leverage whatever we have to reach the most people with the good news of the gospel? After all, we have not just a good message, but we have the message that the world needs. And so we're going to leverage whatever means necessary to get it to the most people possible. In a sense, how do we take Christianity and scale it? Now, some of this is intrinsic to the Christian faith, right? The Christian faith is inherently evangelical in the lowercase sense, in the sense that our call is to go out and make disciples of all nations, right? That we are called to spread the faith. But I'm not sure we always think about the best ways to do it or how what we're doing impacts not only those receiving it, but those giving it. And so today I'm going to talk to what I know, which is YouTube. What does it mean for us to have Christian YouTubers? Is that a good thing? And how should we think through that? Before I jump to the bad, which I think many people are prone to do, I think it is worth thinking about the fact that we are able today to reach more people than ever, reach millions of people from dorm rooms. We are able to reach across the globe and introduce people to the Christian message that might have never heard it simply through clicking record and upload. Of course, there's a couple more things that go into making videos, but that's the main idea. So that's a great thing, right? And it reminds me of Matthew 25 in the parable of the talents in which the, the people are, they're given talents, they're given coins and, and they go out and, and they multiply them, right? They're, they take what they are given and they make the most of it. Say you're given a talent in communicating or videography, or you're simply good at building an audience. You take that and you multiply it. That has to be a good thing. After all, you're doing it for God, right? And if we remember that parable, we remember that the one who was given those talents and buried them and did nothing with them is chastised. So is this exactly what we should be doing? Well, maybe, but I think it's also worth thinking about what our method says about our mission. And so when we think about this, many things come to mind, but here's a few things that I want you to think about before you click off and go 
do whatever else you're doing with your day, which I'm sure there's very important things. But there's a couple things to think about this idea of Christian influencers. And here's the most important, if you ask me. The challenge with Christian influencer culture is that the very things that make you good at being an influencer are disconnected from the things that make you a good follower of Christ. What do I mean by that? To be a famous Christian YouTuber, whatever that means, requires that you have some communication ability, you have some technical ability, right? You know the platform, you know how to make videos, and essentially you're good at making people like you. Like, that's that's the key. You find your niche, you get people to like it, and you do it well, and eventually you have an audience. Those aren't bad things, right? But I think what we all want to recognize is that those very things have nothing to do with faithfulness, with trust, with, with generosity, with a, a pursuit of knowing Christ. They're, they're separate. And what worries me is when we begin to praise and idolize people based on these, assuming that it translates to this. Now, if you're a person that makes content or you watch a lot of content, you read the comments, you can see that people like me, who have somewhat of an audience, get all types of comments from you are Satan incarnate to you are the best thing that has ever happened, right? And I can tell you that being in my shoes, that's a weird thing to navigate and it's something I'm still navigating. But here's something that worries me. It's the fact that based on what I do, which is have conversations about theology, it can become kind of a hero to people. Now, I, I'm not trying to shirk that responsibility, but I think we all need to think critically about this, right? Like, just because someone is good at communicating theology, just because someone is able to have interesting conversations and can produce them well and can communicate somewhat clearly, that doesn't make them a role model in the faith. Now, I would love to be a role model in the faith to people, but not for those reasons. And the reason this is so important is that those we idolize, those we take as our heroes, we begin to shape ourselves around. I felt this in my own life. When I was a, a few years ago, I wanted to be the pastor of the next biggest megachurch. So what would I do? I would follow all the megachurch pastors on Instagram. And I began emulating them. But here's the thing. What I would emulate was how they dressed, was how they talked, was how they posted, was how they carried themselves, was how they strategized their church. But again, that has nothing to do with the, the depth of your love for Christ. And, and I fear that we're going to raise a generation that does that very same thing. That the pinnacle of following Jesus is going to be having a large audience that's going to be reaching all these people, having millions of views, but that is not faithfulness. That is not what following Jesus is all about. Now, it's not bad. It's just somewhat disconnected. And so before we go and idolize our favorite Christian YouTubers or our favorite celebrity pastors, our favorite celebrity priests, like who would have thought celebrity priest would be a thing? But before we do that, let's make sure we're idolizing and heroing, making people heroes for the right reasons, right? In, in the Catholic and Orthodox traditions and other uh, traditions as well, you have saints. And why do you look up to the saints? Is it because they reached millions of people? No, it's because they followed Christ with all their hearts. And that's what I want us to be thinking about. When I look at the next generation, where we see statistics that the number one thing people want to be is a YouTuber, I worry that that's going to seep in to the Christian church. And that instead of just being someone who loves God, who loves their family, who, who loves their neighbor, who does their best to live a life of peace and quiet, being a good neighbor, as Paul talks about, to live a peaceable and quiet life, to follow God, what, what we're going to idolize is doing things for God. But that doing things for God often looks like doing things for ourselves. Growing our brand, getting bigger and more famous because because we're reaching so many people, right? And when you're reaching people, you can justify anything. But here is my hope. Is that we see that what's done on YouTube, what's done on Instagram, what's done on Twitter, what's done on TikTok, what, where people are reaching so many people. What we see that is education. We see that as entertainment. We, we see that as a, a pursuit to, to take the skills we have and do something with it, but, but we don't mistake that for true discipleship, for true faithfulness. That, that we would be more passionate about pursuing an inner life than having this great outer platform. And I think if we can get that order right, we can see what YouTube is for what it is, or we can see what TikTok or Instagram is for what it is. An opportunity to connect, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to be entertained, an opportunity to, to bring some redemption to a platform and meet people where they are. But, but let us never forget that that isn't what following Jesus is all about.
Following Jesus isn't about building our platform, building our brand, having the most followers, and, and making this big impact. Following Jesus is about daily faithfulness. And, and I know that there have been times in my own life where my channel is doing great, and I, at times it's when my channel is doing best that I can, I can substitute that for personal faithfulness. And, and I, I, I just pray that we can all remember what is most important. And so here I'm, I'm preaching to myself as much as anyone else. But, but my invitation to you is to think with me about what it is that we should do with these platforms, how it is that we can interact and, and take on this, this influence that we've been given, but do it in a way that we don't give up our souls for the world, right? I know so many people that would do anything to build a bigger church, to build a bigger platform because they want to reach people but please don't sell your soul to gain the world. That's my invitation. I want to know what you're thinking about it. Leave me a comment down below. How should Christians interact with platforms like YouTube? How should we think about this concept of Christian influencers? How should we think about this idea of influence and reaching the masses while also remembering that personal faithfulness? Those are my two cents. I hope you all are well. Until next time, be on the lookout for more videos. As always, God and love God and love others because truly above all else, that will change the world. Hey, if, if you're still there, I just want to say thanks for watching this video. Seriously, it means a lot to me. Let me know if you would like to see more of these. And one of the best ways you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And if you want to go above and beyond, check us out on Patreon. There's all types of fun perks there, including the new Gospel Simplicity Inside Circle, a bi-weekly book club where we're going to go through classical Christian texts together. I think it's going to be a blast. I'm so grateful for all of you and for all my sponsors who make this possible, like Faithful Counseling. Faithful Counseling is a Christian counseling service that exists to help you get the help you need by pairing you with Christian counselors in less than 48 hours. You can connect with them in all different ways via text, instant message, you can video chat, and they will get you on the path towards healing and wholeness. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check out faithfulcounseling.com slash gospel simplicity and you'll get 10% off your first month. Well, with all that being said, peace. I love you all so much and thanks again.